we're running. Welcome to the Malta Eurovision Song Contest 2015. Song number four in the semi-final. We have the big pleasure to speak to the lady that opened up the Malta Eurovision Song Contest 2014. It's Christabel. Then it was Lavtricity, and now it is? Rush. Rush. Hi, Christabel. Now it's nice to meet you. Thank you. It's so really nice to meet you, too. You have been on the rehearsals on the stage to this, yes. this morning, uh, where on Saturday the Junior Eurovision Song Contest took place. It, of course, it's, it's a question I have to ask you. You've been now on the Eurovision stage. How does that feel? Well, first of all, I was present last Friday and Saturday. I came to both the dress rehearsal and the final show of the Junior Eurovision. And as soon as I walked in, I started crying. Really? <laughs> yes, wow. because the stage is incredible. It's I mean, for our small tea singers, I mean, I have performed abroad before, but, and on tour with artists, but never some, I have never performed on a stage like that, you know what I mean? And the Maltese people did a, an amazing job mm -hmm. building that stage and the setup and everything is so beautiful. So being on that stage today really showed me what a privilege it, it is to be on it, you know what I mean? I can see in your eyes, so give it no problem. I can see in your eyes that, that you, you, you really uh, get a bit of water when you talk yes. about this. Yeah. Tell us about the song Rush itself, who wrote it and, and what it is about. Yes, um, the composer is Elton Zarb and the author is Matt Mushu Mergea, um, two people I believe in a lot. And they won the junior contest last yes. year already. And they, and they wrote Federica's song this year as well. But I believe that uh, they were the best team for me this year because I wanted to write something different and I was involved in the whole process of writing the song, we wrote it together, so it's exactly what I wanted, I wouldn't change a thing. Obviously there's always room for improvement but I believe in the time frame that we had. Mm. We gave, gave it our best and the best product possible. Um, the song has two meanings. One symbolizes my life and me as a person, that I am a very hectic person and I like doing everything and I try find time for everything and everyone. I have a very balanced life, but I believe that uh, when I don't have a lot to do, I freak out. So my life is complete, is in a rush, basically. So you have to always be busy doing things. Yes. So uh, join the club, busy, I'm the same. <laughs> when I'm not busy, I go crazy. Yeah, it's I the think. same for me, same for me. Yes. Yeah. But you, you appear to be very calm. What does give you that calmness? Well, because of all the rehearsals that I've had and all the preparations, I believe that I'm ready to be on that stage. Mm -hmm. And um, watching the rehearsal over at, in the viewing room, I believe that I did a good job on the stage. and. That is only like the fruit from like what I have been doing the past few weeks. Um, rehearsing, vocal training, exercising, keeping fit, because I wouldn't be able to sing and dance at the same time if I didn't do those things. So, I, I believe Jillian Attard, who yes, is, was is, vocal your vocal, is your vocal coach, who was also behind Federica yes. and Gaia. And Gaia. Uh, th these were kids, but now she also has uh, been helping yes. you with it. So how is it to be working with her on the adult level? Um, Gillian understands me completely. I believe that she is one person that it's, I knew her before, but it was a pleasure to get to know her as a person and how much dedication she showed towards me. And she is, honestly, I think she's the best that there is in the business at the moment. And she, she really, I mean, Obviously, I, I used to go vocal training before to, at other, mm. and if it, was, if it were in them, I, would, I wouldn't be here. Mm. You know what I mean? So I, I got all the, ba like, you know, the basic training from other, but from other, obviously, vocal teachers. But I believe that Gillian fit in like a glove with the team because she, lov she loves mm. how hard I work and I love how dedicated she is towards her artists. And when she compares, obviously I used to rehearse with Federica as well, because, wow. because, of, the time that, because of the time limit, there wasn't a lot of time to rehearse. So Federica used to train every night. So when I used to have rehearsals, Federica used to be present. 
and I learned all her song by heart and she learned mine. <laughs> <laughs> because so, that's So all. you can actually sing a bit of Frederica's song? Can you do that? Well, it's, it's a bit hard to sing okay, it yeah, yeah. <laughs> because Federica's voice is like... It's amazing, huh? Would you try it? She is. Would you, would you try faster? Let me try. Yeah. <laughs> it would be the first we have ever had this of, of a Maltese <laughs> Julia, aren't we? Um, let me see which part I'm going to sing. Together we can shine Like diamonds in the sky No dream is out of reach If you just believe Wow, fantastic, uh, wow! Federica's incredible. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot sing like Federica because she is on another level and I think yeah. she is an amazing singer. It's a mezzo soprano. It's a mezzo soprano, yeah, so exactly. obviously her voice is completely different to mine. I'm mm. more contemporary and pop, you know what I mean? But it was a pleasure meeting Federica, and she's like a sister to me now. Mm. But even when, like, as I was saying before, when Gillian compares, when you're young, it's very different because mm. working with Federica and Gaia, um, they are two incredible singers, mm. but obviously they're still kids. Of course, So of course, they yeah. want to act like kids as well. Being an adult is different because obviously you're there, just focus, focus on, on yeah, this. Yeah. I mean, I have university as well because I'm in my final year doing my masters, but this week is just dedicated towards Eurovision. Yeah, Eurovision so. and the performances. What, what, what uh, are you studying at university? I'm doing my masters in accountancy. Mm -hmm. So uh, hopefully I'll graduate next November, this time next year. I wow. already graduated last year. I got my commerce degree and now to become an accountant. <laughs> so basically singing is something you do aside, it's not going to be one of your Obviously main if, if things? The no, that was, that was what I always struggled with because I got the opportunity to uh, live and study in America and uh, be part of a television show in America, but my dad thought that I should finish school first and he thinks that opportunities may still come along. Mm -hmm. Obviously. I have to be realistic and I believe that w in Malta it's very very difficult to do it full time, mm -hmm. to do music full time so I believe that school is my number one priority. Obviously there's time where you prioritize different, different things like for example this past month has been all about Eurovision. Mm -hmm. I still attended my lectures and I still found time to study because I have exams soon. My last exams are in January, so hopefully if I'll win, for me, I'll be good, <laughs> I won't have exams. But I believe that uh, um, school comes first. Mm -hmm. Obviously, to make a living in Malta, to yeah. earn a living, you have to have a bit of school background. And I believe that my future could be a singing accountant. Too. Yes. <laughs> so, well, if you want not to be a singer or an accountant, what would you really love to be? Well, a fashion designer wow. because I love fashion and I follow fashion. Fashion is my passion <laughs> that I have to find time for as well because I love fashion. Amazing. Well, uh, you, you're singing for, for 19 years, but also I saw that you've been doing some hosting of TV shows. Yes, when I was younger, um, I used to uh, have my own TV shows on a na national television. At, it, was, it was a great time in my life because it was a busy time in my life. Obviously, I had to stop because of school commitments, mm -hmm. and then I traveled to America to study vocal training and performance, so I had to stop for a while because obviously I had to prioritize other things. I still get a few jobs here and there, people asking me to, to host shows for them, and you know, these. Uh, and in fact, last week I was one of the presenters for a national television show. They get, a, they get someone every week to present, and I loved it. Mm. So I'd love to go back one day. Obviously, for now, let's, let's put it this way. For now, I don't really have time, but, <laughs> but I would love to go back and host, have my own TV show one day. This mortar is so amazing. Right? <laughs> you do everything you, you can do. If you want to, you can do everything you yes, want to. Yes, because, because there's a lot of opportunity for the reason that there aren't many people, mm -hmm. but... Um, the Maltese tend to believe in their talent, meaning if you were, 
interviewer, someone from TV, and he sees the potential, he's not going to hold you back and not give you the opportunity to be on television. I mean, there are a lot of TV shows where they get kids and they speak, and they, that's how you start, you know what I mean? It's, it's I mean, amazing. I started, um, I used to watch a TV show, and uh, I called on it to tell her that I really like her show, and she liked the way I spoke, mm -hmm. and asked me to go in to speak to her, and she gave me a slot in her program. That's how I started. So then, and I started, you know, you know Shara Bank? When I was six years old, I was on the panel, wow, speaking wow. about, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I was on the panel because Pepe believed in my potential, mm. you know what I mean? So That's amazing. Um, I, I saw in, in, the, in the bio a little bit of you that you actually do have a link to the Junior Eurovision Song Contest. Yes, Did you take I, part in, yes, in the Yes, I used to well? take part when, uh, when uh, I was younger. The last time I took part, I came second. I believe it was the uh, Sophie one. Okay. Uh, that was the year when I was in America that summer. And I remember I came back to, uh, to the Junior Eurovision and uh, it was a good time in my life and um, obviously when you're young there's a lot of pressure from the parents so not my parents uh, mm -hmm. there's a lot of pressure from other parents because of the competition because yeah, when yeah. you're younger it's it's very diff different different yeah. Be because now i we're all like one team i mean you know in the mm -hmm. more television we're all we all speak to each other it's 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 a very relaxed scenario let's put it that way with Junior Revision, it's a bit different because there's a, there are the parents involved, mm. obviously. Because you cannot, you can't expect a 12-year-old, an 11-year-old mm. kid to do everything on her own. But it was a great time, and I believe that it helped me boost my confidence on stage because I, using those sta that's those kind of stage stage uh, setups and mm -hmm. whatever, helped me be able to be a bit more confident on stage. Fantastic, and that's what certainly you are. We saw you last you. year, well, in, early on in 2014, Love Tricity. Now this time it's Rush. Yes. We wish you all the best of luck on, Thank on you very the much. semi-final. Yes. And vote for song number four. Yes. Thank you.